Now, believe it or not, one of the biggest questions we get on social media is what smartwatch should you get this holiday season? And this is a rather interesting topic, particularly because smartwatches are still in their infancy. They're not necessarily great products, but then again, some of them are extremely compelling for what they can do. So we're going to try to help you out with this video, pick the best one. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now, here with a quick how to choose the best smartwatch for you this holiday season. There are two very important questions when choosing a smartwatch. Number one, the platform, because not all smartwatches work with all smartphones and you actually need for these to connect. So yeah, the Apple Watch doesn't work with Android, but it's the opposite case with Android Wear, for example. But the second and most important question is what you want the smartwatch for. One of the biggest questions I get on Twitter is which smartwatch is best for fitness? And you'll be surprised at how few of these smartwatches actually get fitness right. Others are just for notifications, for example, so it all depends on your needs to start. Android Wear is the oddest of the crowd, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because, well, if you want elegant smartwatches, Android Wear has got your back. The problem is these are the worst products when it comes to fitness because most of these just track you but don't necessarily help you finish a workout or assist you in any way or actually serve as a full heart rate monitor. They've got sensors, but that's pretty much it. But yeah, if you're out for stylish smartwatches, something that looks really good and that does notifications really well, then hey, you've got the Moto 360 second generation, you've got the LG Watch Urbane, you've got the Huawei Watch, which is gorgeous, and there are a ton of options out there when it comes to style. That's the best thing about Android Wear. You can actually pick the one you want and that fits your needs best when it comes to design. Now, if you are on a budget, then Android Wear also has your back. There are other watches that are extremely affordable, like the Asus Zen Watch 2, which is a really nice watch indeed, but also very affordable. And then the good thing about Android Wear is that it hasn't really changed in the past two years as a platform per se, or when it comes to hardware and its needs. So, hey, I'm still using last year's Moto 360, and I'm really happy with it. I feel that I don't need to upgrade. So if you find a good deal when it comes to last year, offerings, yeah, you can also go for that. You'll most likely be good with these for a good amount of time. And the only problem you'll probably notice is that, yeah, you'll have a clunky experience when it comes to certain aspects of the operating system, particularly, hey, in the old Moto 360 or in the first LG G Watch, for example. Don't go too cheap with Android Wear. Again, if you can afford a little more and buy something that's elegant for you and that's uh, going to last you for a bit, then yeah, spend on that. Now, if you want to live up to your true inner geek, there is no better option than Samsung's gear offerings that are based on Tizen. And the reason why is because these are not the best looking smartwatches out there, but they're the ones that can do everything. If you want to make phone calls, there's the Gear S and there is the cellular capable Gear S2. But even better is the fact that number one, there is a bevy of applications that already supports Tizen for these watches. And the other is that these watches actually bring sensors that are useful for fitness. Particularly, if you want to use the Gear S2 for a run, you actually can leave your phone at home. And I'm actually talking about the non-cellular capable watch. You can actually use it for a full run and then just sync everything. You can sync your music to it. You connect your headset to it. And it's actually extremely useful as a watch on its own without needing to be connected to the phone. But yes, connected to the phone, it can do even more things. These are not the most affordable watches indeed, but uh, they can do a ton of things and they can do a ton of things right, particularly the Gear S2. This is the one we would most recommend if you want to go all out. I mean, the user interface is nice. Again, the apps are good and the functionality is actually not bad at all. All you have to do is make up your mind whether you want the sports variant or the classic and then you're good to go pretty much. Now, the king of smartwatches is the Apple Watch, but not necessarily for all the right reasons. Apple did a really good job at marketing the watch, but it's not necessarily the best looking one or the one that's the most capable. It's still waiting for application support from developers, and the fact that it's not really selling well tells you a lot. 
Now, hey, it is really good for a few things, like for example, fitness. The Apple Watch actually has its own application that's separate to the phone that can control your fitness activities, and it also has a full heart rate sensor as well. You can also sync your music to it and actually go for a run without the need of a phone, which is a really great option as well. The biggest problem with the Apple Watch is that this is a first generation product. It is clunky in certain things, it can't do other things really well, and the biggest problem is that that its hardware is not the best and that it's extremely overpriced. This is actually one of those products that we would recommend that unless you find the really good deal for the sports variant, I think it's best for you to actually wait for the Apple Watch 2, which could be happening somewhere around next year, it's particularly for its price. But the best thing about the smartwatch market is that there are a ton of other players out there that are really good at it. Like for example, Pebble, which is one of the pioneers. We've got the Pebble Time and the Pebble Time Round, which are really good smartwatches when it comes to looks and when it comes to notifications, but they're not the best when it comes to fitness. But in the other opposite direction is Microsoft, where they have a really good fitness wearable with the Microsoft Band 2, but it's not necessarily the best when it comes to other things, like looks, for example, or feel in the arm, but hey, if you're looking for a really good fitness wearable that's cross-platform, then yeah, the Microsoft Band 2 is a good option. And finally, you also have other options from other companies that just dedicate to this, like for example, Garmin. Garmin's Vivo lineup is extremely good when it comes to fitness. I would say the best ones out there, but not necessarily great with other things. And then you also have the Fitbit lineup out there. Like for example, in the case of the Fitbit Surge, it's not the best smartwatch out there, and it doesn't look really well either, but it's really good when it comes to fitness as well. So again, it all depends on what needs you have. Bottom line, I guess this is the best way to end this video. Your needs should determine everything. Out of my personal experience, I could tell you this much. I've been using smartwatches for the past two years, and I really can't find myself going a day without them. They're extremely useful if you're able to pick right. If you want good looks, there are good options out there. If you want fitness tracking, there are other good options out there. It all depends on your needs. Just remember, you really don't need a smartwatch, but these things are getting really cool and really useful over time. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And again, there is a very complete smartwatch, smartphone, and tablet buyer's guide. The link is in the description with the best deals out there for you to pick. So make sure you follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. You can follow me on Twitter, Jaime underscore Rivera, or on Instagram at Jaime Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I am Jaime Rivera. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next week.